Pralia Productions, in association with Soul Drifter Studios and their affiliates, presents The Martian Broadcast, an audio drama based on the true story of the infamous 1938 radio broadcast that shook the nation with fear. Previously on The Martian Broadcast. The script is good enough to appease CBS, but we can do better. We must. You want a show so bad? Stick around. Work with us. We've now only got four days to pull a show out of our socks. There were snippets you all did with a news reporter. Why not make it the whole damn thing? You want to make it a news story? We tell the story of the invasion in real time. We could do eyewitness interviews. You know CBS is not going to approve of this. I didn't hear anyone here asking for permission, did you? This is episode four. Look who's still standing. The sun just started peeking up, but we've been up all night. For some in this little group, it's their second all-nighter in a row. Seems extreme, I know, but we go live the day after tomorrow. True, my head feels like a train ran over it at high speeds, and yeah, we're all just a little cranky. Cotch, spit out that gum or I'll rip it from your damn mouth. And sure, we could all use a break, as well as a shower. Smells like we've been camping out in CBS for days. But the script isn't half bad. It may be the sleep deprivation talking, but I think it may even be good. So, I got three black, two with one sugar, and one with milk and sugar. And don't forget to tip your waitress. We need to cut out the bit before the second half. Why? It lacks weight. Weight? You have aliens melting people with heat rays. I don't think it can get heavier than that. As it stands, it sounds like there is hope for the human race to triumph. But that's the beauty. It is not the machine built by man, but the machine inside all men. The germ that undoes these Martians. I still think that ending is dingy. (sighs) It's in the book. All right, fine. Are there any more changes I need to worry about before rehearsal tomorrow? No, Paul, I think that'll suffice. Good. I'm going home. Annie's bringing back coffee, and we need to see Davidson at two with this. Then someone else get the jitters for me. I'm tired and want some sleep, but I'll be there. Don't worry. Hmm. A bed does sound nice. We can sleep when we're through. What are you talking about? Aura. Any ideas for sound design? Oh, we can discuss them later, Orson. For now... I want to see my husband, I want my smoke, and I want my coffee. Speak of the little orphan. Hey, Annie, I'm going to take mine to go. Good work, boys. I think I'll follow suit. Can I, generals? Can I, Private Froelich? Here, drink up. When was the last time you slept? Would you believe me if I told you? I think we both need it. We're dealing with the lion's den again. I don't see why we have to tell them we're doing this. Because if we don't, we don't get paid. And trust me when I say this, Orson. I wouldn't put up with you for free. (laughs) Neither would I. I'm thankful that we pulled through. Even if it is nearly eight in the morning. Makes me feel like a young artist again. (laughs) Annie, do you need a ride home? That would be nice. Orson, how about you? Orson? Orson. Wake up! Come on, man, wake up! Is he alright? I swear I didn't pour decaf. Well, I guess he'll need a ride all the same. Annie, give me a hand. Of course. He's... Heavier than he looks. Uh, In more ways than one. Let's move before someone thinks we've committed murder. I just want to thank you again for the other evening. He's asleep. Besides, I'm certain he knows by now. Better that he know as little as possible, Annie. Aura knows. Does she? I... I think so. Koch has no clue, but it wouldn't bother him anyway. I appreciate your willingness to be so forthcoming, but 
Please understand where I come from. I just don't want to be a secret that you're content with hiding. Content? Annie, do you realize how unprofessional it would appear? <laughs> I'm glad image is so important to you. Oh, uh, not to me. No, 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 no. But to the Mercury Theater. We all know that she comes first. <laughs> Annie. I understand. And the theater always comes first, Mr. Houseman. Don't worry, I'll remember that more as we move forward in our professional relationship. Annie, please. You can let me off here. I'm not far. I know you aren't. Let me take you home. I think you need to worry about the man in your back seat more than you need to worry about me. Because without him, there is no theater. And without the theater, I guess we don't have very much in common. Annie! Annie! I'll call you tonight. Damn it, John. I could always be your Cyrano, you know. How long have you been awake? Long enough. You know, I don't mind, right, John? I know. I know. Then what does it matter? Maybe I mind. I was a married man, and now... busting after someone a decade younger? We are but carnal creatures dressed in suits and ties. I think I liked you more when you were snoring. I think I liked you more then, too. <sighs> 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Do you need a ride? No, I'll call a car. I don't want to burden you more than I already have. Oh, now you're concerned with burdening me. I'll see you at 2, John. At two. Okay, men. We face an assault against U.S. soil unlike one nation has ever faced in the history of this world. Invaders from Mars have deemed us an enemy and are treating us with hostility, and we must answer in kind. And then we have a moment where the troops conquer an alien and we cut to commercial. What, right in the middle of it? Yes, it allows us a moment of reprieve before we delve into the heart of the story. <sighs> There's so little of the original here. Why the changes? Orson thought it would be for the best. Orson thought? Well, what do you think, John? Well, I... Because I think you may want to just go back to what was given to us. Uh, what you were given was a first pass of the story. We have spent the week working, refining. What we gave you previously is not ready for broadcast. At least it isn't whatever this is. I don't follow. And this is a radio station, John. We need a real show to sell to advertisers, not a fake news story. Well, we don't have anything other than this. What you're telling me is that you will not do anything other than this show? Correct. Nothing that we're willing to put the Mercury Theater's name on. You know, when I made the original deal with the Mercury Theater, it was a deal with Orson, not you. Orson and I are of a mind on this. Would you like me to fetch him for you? He'll parrot what I've said. No, but it's starting to become very clear that without Orson around, you all are helplessly lost in your sea of creativity. This was all Orson's idea. Then where is he? If this is his idea, and he's not here to sell it to me, then it's one of two things. One, he thinks I'm gullible enough to buy anything with his name attached. Or two, he has such little respect for me, he sends his cast and crew to do the work we for We are him. not just his cast and crew, Mr. Taylor. We work together. Quaint. Would you like me to put that at the end of every one of your ads we run? The Mercury Theater. They work together. Davidson, please. Don't take your frustration out on them. They were merely here to help pitch along with me. Well, try as you might, it didn't quite work. And the boys upstairs didn't really care for the script you turned in anyway. We asked for ghosts and, and ghouls and we got... <sighs> well, I don't even know what we got. But it wasn't what we wanted. We don't have time to create another show. We have to air on Sunday. What about Around the World in 80 Days? What about it? We'll do a rerun. Numbers were great. We'll call it an encore presentation. A rerun? 
You're a theater man, right? Think of this as a two-week show. But that's not what we do at the Mercury Theater. What you do at the Mercury Theater is of no concern of mine. What Orson Welles does at the Mercury Theater, well, that's just my business, isn't it? Operator, Orson Welles, please. Thank you. I want you to tell him personally that not only will you replay Around the World in 80 Days, but from now on, I will be involved in the writing process to ensure CBS's satisfaction. I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Sir, no one is answering. Do you have another line? Wells! Yes. Hi. Uh, how are you? Sir? Oh, yes. I, I know you're very busy today, and that's why you couldn't come. Sir? But I've got some unfortunate news. Please try again another time. Yes. Yes, it's just as you feared. They want us to rerun around the world. <laughs> right. Wait, what? No. Orson, you didn't. D didn't what? Well, now we don't have a show then, do we? Here, pass me that phone. No, they turned down both versions. I don't know. I didn't think you would. No, I don't care if the recording was bad. It's for posterity. I th Orson? Wells? Wells! <clears throat> Mr. Taylor, I would just like to say it was a pleasure working with you and with CBS Studios. I don't follow. Orson burned the recording of Around the World. Dissatisfied with his own performance, he destroyed the only recording we have. You're kidding. Would I kid about something like this? Call him back. I want to speak to him immediately. I'm afraid I can't do that either. Why not? And I quote, Tell Taylor that if we don't get our new show on the air, he can forget the Mercury Theatre Presents and the name Orson Welles with it. Who does he think he is? General Custer. Or God, given the day. He said that he's tired of feeling stifled by soup peddlers. Huh. This is not going to work. This, this is not going to work one bit. Davidson, Davidson, don't worry. We can just do this show. Absolutely not. If we must, we'll skip a week. But now it's just the principle of the thing. He gave that brat the keys to the kingdom. And this is how he repays CBS? <sighs> I think not. I'm going to speak to my colleagues and we'll come up with a solution. Until then, I suggest you rethink your position in both Wells' world and ours. All of you. You may leave. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. I do apologize for wasting your time. So, what are we rehearsing tomorrow? The only script we have. But Davidson thinks I that... don't give a damn what Davidson thinks. He's not going to let us on the air. We'll come back tomorrow, after Tempest Cool. I'm sure we'll be able to convince them to let us use this script. You sound so certain. Forgive me. Some of us didn't sleep after our work. I'll have to let Annie go if Davidson comes into the writing room. Why? Too many cooks in the kitchen spoil the soup. I am so tired of hearing about soup. But don't do anything hasty. We will figure out something. For now, just keep pushing forward with the work. Fine by me. Koch, did Annie ever get the copies out? Nah, they're still in my car. She hasn't picked them up. Probably still sawing logs. Oh, poor kid. Yeah, poor kid, nothing. Here. I'll take them to Olsen. No, let me. He's on my way home. Plus, I told Art I'd grab him some hooch. Aura, it's no problem. No, it is no problem for you. But I have a problem. What is it? Wells. Oh, good luck with that. I think we all have that same problem. Yes, but I think I'm the only one willing to do something about it. Sheesh, and you call yourselves men. Sheesh, who spiked her coffee this morning? Whoever did, maybe I should ask them to pour me one too. Who's up for what? As good a time as any, I'll drive. Hey. 
And here I thought he'd live in a castle. The larger-than-life Orson Welles barely pays rent in a one-bedroom that's crammed between a deli and a plumber. You think you'd get tired of performing for pennies when this is what's backstage. Just a moment. I said one moment, I'm coming. Ah, 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 here's a knocking indeed. Took you long enough. What, were you in the tub? Or just stoking that fireplace for a few minutes? Aura, I didn't expect you so late. Yeah, great. Here. By all means, come in. Your copy of the script for tomorrow. Ah, thank you. Normally Annie or Koch would do the drop-off. Well, you got me. Right. Uh, is there something else? Uh, no. Do you want to get to work before we pull another all-nighter? Actually, I'll be in previews at the theater all day tomorrow, so it'll be a fairly early evening for us. Of course it will. What was that? Nothing. Except, no, I didn't say nothing. I said, of course it will. Because what else should we expect from you? I beg your pardon? Oh, just can it. How dare you? If you have something to say, why don't you say it? Don't take this unacceptable. Unacceptable? What are you, 23? What do you know about unacceptable? Playing keep away from your partner is unacceptable. Showing up for a few hours a week and getting all the glory is unacceptable. Belittling the work of your team is unacceptable. The only reason they all put up with it is because they work for you. But guess what? I don't. I make my living no matter what the great Orson Welles thinks of me. And that's why I'm here and not Annie and not Koch. Because I'm the only one who can say what needs saying. Ah, so they've got a bone to pick and instead of coming to me directly, the cowards send you. Oh, they didn't send me. I speak for myself here. Because despite all sound reasoning, they seem to adore you, along with your many flaws, and forgive you for all the mistreatment. Mistreatment? Yes, Orson. These people are destroying themselves working for you, and you don't give a damn. I've made no secret about the intensity of my life and my work. If they cannot handle the pace, they are free to leave, as are you, which I I recommend you do now. No. I'm not going yet because this is something you need to hear. Don't you ever presume to know what I need. You think I've never come up against the likes of you? You think the old guard has never stood in my way? Never called me an upstart, a whelp, a little pup? You want to know why I am where I am? Because every time someone like you tried to push me down, I pushed right back. Take a look who's still standing. You are where you are because of the people you have been treating like dirt, Orson. They didn't want to do War of the Worlds. They made that perfectly clear. They stayed up all night to get that draft to you. Then as soon as it's done, you call it trash and give away the only copy. We make a tape for you and you call it boring. God, Orson, don't you get it? What? You're going to lose them. And it's all because you don't respect them. Uh, I do respect them. Then why did you destroy the recording of our show? What? Around the world in 80 days. God, Orson, why did you do that? That wasn't just your work. That was everyone's. That was mine. I never destroyed any pressing. But John said... Well, you you told him you burned it when he called you today. Laura, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. I haven't spoken to John since this morning, and I certainly never admitted to destroying my own work. Look, look. I still have it. It's right here. Then... then why did John say you burned it? Perhaps he's learning to be a bit too much like myself. I feel like all of this could have been avoided. No, no. This was inevitable. If it wasn't from me, it would have come from one of them eventually. Orson, is there anyone you'd like to apologize to now? Yes. Uh, Yes, I'm working up to it. Aura, I am sorry about all that, for the way I treated you especially. Without you, we wouldn't be half the theater we are. A genuine apology from Orson Welles. Wish I could have recorded that. (laughs) If you did, I would have destroyed that in a heartbeat. (laughs) We can work on sound tomorrow. First thing, if you like. 
Oh, I thought you had the thing at the... My show is falling apart, Aura. My team is overworked. Everyone's sleep deprived. And my business partner lied to our boss that I destroyed company property. I'll be there tomorrow. Good night, Orson. Good night, Tora. West Coast never knows what time it is, do they? Orson Welles speaking. Do you think this is all some kind of a joke? Ah, Mr. Taylor. I was just speaking with my team. You've got some nerve. You're lucky I don't take the cost of the pressing out of your pants. Uh, <laughs> Calm down, Taylor. Every minute I waste cleaning up after you is coming out of your pocket. Do you hear me, you overstuffed and great? Yes, of course, but there seems to be some miscommunication. The only thing that hasn't been communicated effectively here is how your future with CBS hangs by a thread. Destroying around the world? How childish and ungrateful. How, how could I have destroyed something if I can't find it? But you told Hausman, but I thought... Lost is not destroyed. What? Just making sure. So... You do have it? It's somewhere in this apartment. I, I could have sworn I had my hands on it just now. Oh, thank God. I must have misheard. Make sure to find it before tomorrow. That's company property, after all. And there is nothing more precious than that, especially for you. Right. Right. I think you and your team need to get on the same page. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk to Hausman about all this tomorrow. Have a good night, Mr. Taylor. Sorry again for the misunderstanding. Sorry, Aura. <sighs> for all I know, he could have showed me an entirely different recording. But I believed him when he said he didn't destroy around the world. Or maybe I just wanted to believe. I remember asking him for it years later. And he told me he lost the damn thing. Around the time of War of the Worlds. <laughs> Ain't that grand. Thank you for listening to The Martian Broadcast, an audio drama production brought to you by Pralia Productions, Soul Drifter Studios, and their affiliates. Directed by S. Christian Rowe. Written by S. Christian Rowe and Jordan Stidham. Starring Ari Stidham as Orson Welles, Keaton Talmadge as Aura Nichols, Jim Brannigan as John Houseman, Oscar Jordan as Davidson Taylor, Courtney Reese as Ann Froelich, Christopher Hodge as Howard Koch, and Rama Valori as Paul Stewart. Produced by Casey Hammonds, Daniel Patton, Jordan Stidham, and S. Christian Rowe. Music composition by J.D. O'Day. Sound editing by Jason Crow. Hi, everyone. This is Christian Rowe. And this is Jordan Stidham, creators of The Martian Broadcast. Saying once again, thank you so much for listening. That was episode number four of the series, and we were so thrilled to bring it to you. But it would not have been possible at all without the amazing support of some wonderful people. People like... Tasha Carter, Michael Yellen, Samantha Maddock, Caleb Alt, Matina Newsom, and Amy Hawkins. If you didn't hear your name, don't worry. Stay tuned. It's a coming. Thank you so much for listening again. If you like this podcast, please subscribe wherever you are getting the podcast from so you can stay up to date on when new episodes drop. You can also find us on our Instagram or Twitter pages at Martian Broadcast. That is the at symbol Martian as in Martian and broadcast spelled B-R-D-C-S-T. Please make sure to rate, share, and uh, subscribe. And thank you so much for listening.